For years, I've been exploring ways to recycle 3D printing waste into forms that can be used in other processes. Today, I'm gonna to take you through an inexpensive and repeatable way to turn shredded waste or even multicolor poop into beautiful recycled sheets of plastic. I'm pretty passionate about reducing waste in general, but in particular about reducing waste from 3D printing. Being a form of additive manufacturing, it only uses what it needs. So it should be more efficient than removing chunks of material from a larger block like we see in subtractive manufacturing. However, failed prints, purged waste plastic, support material, and redundant models from iterative design inevitably leads to waste. So let's do something useful with that. In this case, turning it into sheets of recycled material. My plan all along has to take this 3D printed waste, shred it, and then use it in a number of ways. I've got a hobby injection molder machine, and recently I've had some videos on my efforts to restore this, as well as designing and CNC machining some molds. Making new filament with a filament extruder is perhaps the most attractive option, and around a year and a half ago I purchased this Protocycler Plus. I was just getting going on it when I moved house. That was over a year ago, but recently I've got the project going once more. And that leaves us with pressing and melting flat sheets, which I've not been successful at so far. In my first shred and recycle video, I formed some pretty rudimentary sheets. Back then, I was using a garden shredder and then a modified crosscut paper shredder. I then had some silicon cooking molds that I would put the ground plastic into before putting these into the oven and waiting some time for them to melt down. The results from this were just okay. And that's because one side was really good, but the other side remained bumpy. Relying on gravity and heat to melt the plastic down to a uniform thickness just doesn't cut it. In my follow-up video, I stepped things up massively by buying and then building around a precious plastic shredder box. This was a lot more powerful and convenient than my previous system. It also gave much finer and more consistent chunks of ground plastic. However, melting these on a tray in the oven meant that was still quite rough on one side. Obviously, there had to be a better way. Looking for answers, I headed back to Precious Plastics. In case you haven't heard of them, Precious Plastics is an organization that creates open source equipment for recycling all plastic, not just that from 3D printing. This includes logistics, like providing resources to collect and sort plastic, as well as the shredder and other machines, so that recycled plastic can receive new life. And as part of their machinery, they have what they call a sheet press. They even have a video going through the process of converting this waste into large plastic sheets. After preparation, they have a metal barrier that they pour the shredded plastic into. This mold then goes into the open source sheet press, where it gets a cover and is clamped shut to melt. Once everything is cooled and released, we have these beautifully uniform sheets of plastic ready to be turned into something new. I was sold, so started to explore my options and saw the investment was between 9 to 22,000 euros. No doubt this is an impressive piece of equipment, but I'm just one guy in my house and I wasn't planning to sell the sheets to make any of that money back. Furthermore, this thing was enormous at 450 kilos, took up quite a lot of room and I needed 400 volts to run it. I had a look through the bazaar or marketplace to see if there was something more affordable, but I was out of luck. In Australian money, getting one of these was going to be well over $10,000 and I just couldn't justify that. So Precious Plastics had a solution, but not one that was suitable for individuals instead of businesses. Frustrated, I started googling, typing in heat press instead of sheet press. I think this was a mistake, but the results were actually just what I needed. They were showing t-shirt heat presses, and I've actually had one of these for years now. As demonstrated on a very early video on the channel, where I bought some t-shirts from a thrift shop and modified them with some customized vinyl cut graphics. It was a bit dusty, but I still had this machine. It has two halves, the upper half being heated, and then a mechanism to press down and apply pressure, just like a small version of the Precious Plastics machine. On the underside, we have some foam to help keep everything flat, and the whole top half swivels out of the way for easy access. The temperature went up to over 250 degrees Celsius, hot enough for most 3D printed plastics, so it was definitely worth having a try making a plastic sheet. I used oven baking paper to line the top and bottom, and then poured some of my shredded plastic into the middle and spread it out as best as I could. After that, I put another sheet of baking paper over the top, clamped the two halves together, turned the machine on, and waited for the PLA plastic to melt. 
The result had some problems, but was still encouraging. Firstly, a hot spot had burnt a hole in the top of the paper, but underneath that was a plastic sheet that was way better than anything I had done before. I did open to check on this as it was cooling down, and the result of that was it warped terribly. But that is an easy problem to solve, and the middle of the sheet was uniform, strong, and very flat. So some clear issues, but they were obvious problems, and I figured the solutions wouldn't be that hard. A breakthrough suitable for a small makerspace, a school, or an individual hobbyist like myself. So now to optimize the process. Although I already had a heat press, I wanted it to be bigger. I wanted to make square sheets as large as possible, but still be able to store the heat press. And my search has led me to this one, 275 Australian, which is around 180 US. In terms of construction, it seemed to be pretty much identical to what I already had. However, the size of the heated element was 15 by 15 inches or 38 centimeters squared. It also did up to 204 degrees, plenty for PLA and probably other filaments too was in stock and had free shipping. This was from Vivor, I'd never ordered from them before. I was a little bit hesitant, so imagine my surprise when it arrived the very next day. That's free shipping in Australia in a timely manner, unheard of. Inspecting the heat press, it looked very similar to the old one. It didn't swivel from side to side, but it did open up a lot further. Again, the heating element was on top and the bottom had two layers of foam to help spread the load. Operation is very straightforward. We have a target temperature and we can display either degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. And then we also have a countdown timer that we can set the duration of. This starts automatically whenever you close the press and it will beep relentlessly once it reaches zero. The next piece of the puzzle was to replace the oven baking paper with something more durable. Thinking I would need a silicon mat, I instead stumbled across this barbecue hot plate liner. Good for 100 cycles, up to 250 degrees Celsius and only $5. These were quite thin and easy to handle, and of course the size was bigger than the base of the heat press. To keep things neat, I decided I would need a metal frame border, so I got this cheap aluminium plate that I would later cut down and join together in the corners to make a frame. But first, a quick proof of concept, with a small amount of ground plastic in the middle between two barbecue hot plate liners. I set the timer for 5 minutes and closed the press once it got up to my target temperature of 200 degrees Celsius but this wasn't quite long enough, so I ended up doubling the timer to 10 minutes with the lid closed. After an additional five minutes, everything was sufficiently gooey, so I clamped the lid again and turned the machine off to start cooling down. And typical for me, I opened this up too early because I was impatient. The sheet was still warmed and it distorted immediately. So due to me, the sheet was warped, but still a good result and worth pursuing. Time to make that border frame, and I jumped into Onshape and design this simple bracket to be CNC machined and hold the corners together. The Carvera desktop CNC made short work of this. The part was cut from 6mm aluminium with a 3mm pocket that the bars could sit in and rest flush. And this is how each of the corner brackets looked straight off the machine. I also designed some drilling jigs for the straight strips that made drilling accurate and repeatable holes a formality. What did take a little time was tapping an M5 thread into each of the two holes per end but once that was done, each framing piece went together quite quickly. I made three of these in total, and they're designed to just fit over the lip of the heat press foam. And then I trimmed down half of my hot plate liners to match this square shape as well. The final components were some trimmed down pieces of lined particle board. I cut these just a tiny bit narrower than everything else to stay flat as they cooled and solidified. So the entire process is as follows. I take my trimmed down barbecue liner and put it on top of the foam. I then take one of the metal frames and I put it so the large section faces down. Shredded waste filament then goes into the middle and I spread it out as best as I can. And this part needed the most trial and error to get the right amount of plastic the right distance from the edge. Following that, the uncut barbecue liner goes over the top of everything. I turn on the heater and wait for it to reach 200 degrees Celsius. And once it does, close the lid where the 10 minute timer will begin. The press beeps like crazy once zero is reached. I then fit some gloves open the press and try and take the whole assembly, flipping it upside down onto a flat board. I then place one of my cut boards on top of that and apply pressure with a kettlebell while everything cools down. With the goal of efficiency, I've designed this system so I can make multiple sheets at once. Each new sheet stacking on top of the last with a layer of timber in between and then the kettlebell on top. There were some mishaps like forgetting to put the top liner on and having all of the plastic stick to the underside of the press. 
Fortunately, after it cooled enough, the sheet was able to be peeled off, and I simply put it back in the press to heat it up and get it flat once more. Eventually, I worked out that I should put plastic pretty much the whole way to the edge, and have it sitting just a little bit proud of the frame. And this yields sheets, with plastic the whole way into each of the four corners, and pretty uniform thickness too, although the edges are not quite as good as the centre, and that's due to variations in the shape of the heat press. Obviously, not everyone has their own shredder or wants to build one, so I also experimented with these perch poops spat out by Bamboo Lab printers. These are harder to place because they are a lot thicker, and I didn't quite have enough to go the whole way to the edge. And clearly, these are sitting way above where they should be. With that in mind, I didn't fully clamp the heat press. Instead, I let it get up to temp, closed it, but simply let it rest on top so the filament could start to melt. Sometime later, I clamped it, and you can see it still wasn't fully closed on the front lip, but as the minutes ticked by and the heat spread through, everything went flat, and I followed the rest of my normal procedure to produce this. It's got quite a different pattern because the source plastic is so much larger. Like the other sheets, it's got a uniform thickness. It's quite flat and I think quite attractive too. Those results were satisfying, but now to address the elephant in the room. And that is, what to actually do with all of these recycled sheets of PLA. If we head back to Precious Plastics, there's actually quite a lot of resources there. With a community how-to section going step by step on how to make various products. There's more general guides on how to bend the sheet plastic, and then specific guides for making things like stools, or this chair that's featured on the homepage. Some of these I found quite fascinating, such as making a knife using the recycled plastic sheet, but a lot of them required making a mold, which I don't think is worth it for a one-off. Instead, I wanted to do what I always do with sheet plastic, and that's laser cut it. And I was worried that this PLA would melt too easily and potentially even catch on fire, but I used my acrylic settings and it cut really cleanly, no problems at all. I always find it exciting to open the laser cutter after the job is done and then lift the sheet to reveal the object left behind. I did some of my logos plus some other shapes for my kids and I've linked those vectors below in the description. Using this recycled material I had a 100% success rate. Cutting the material was easy and also quite fast, the longest of these jobs being around 10 minutes. Here I experimented with a pattern that I previously made a video about. This slot array allows parts to bend, and only where the laser was going back and forth close to itself did things get a little bit hot and messy. But ultimately, this part is still completely functional, and the surface pattern of the sheet, left from the Bamboo Lab purge poops, I think looks really cool here. I'm pleased because now I've ticked off one of the three options I had for recycling 3D printing waste. All up, my entire setup cost around 200 US dollars, and I think it would work really well with other plastics, even those that we don't 3D print, such as those found in food packaging. Let me know what you think about my results down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy recycling 3D printed waste. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.